Tell you what, I'm gonna need more than one of these by the time I finish this flipping video. Watch your profanity. The Christmas lunch. The big celebration, the final finale. Christmas day. The most stressful thing you're ever gonna make in the year. I know this is, this is gonna be a stressful one. I know it is. Because I'm making a full bloody Christmas dinner in this tiny ass kitchen for four people when it's just me on my own. And we're gonna do it for under 20 quid. How about that? Because Adam loves you. Looking after you. It's Christmas. Listen, before I dive in, let's do the usual thing. Like, share, subscribe. Thank you very much. If you know people that are struggling and stressed about the Christmas dinner, send them this. It's gonna be nice and cheap. It's gonna feed the family. Make your belly happy. So, yeah, what first? I haven't planned any of this, of course. Um, I think we'll start with the bird. Let's go. Bird. Now your eyes are not deceiving you. This is not a turkey. It is in fact a chicken. Right then, why are you using a chicken on Christmas day? Shouldn't it be a turkey? Well, yes, if you want a turkey. The problem is, is that I find turkey is a bit, well, it's a bit shit in my view but also it's the most expensive component of your Christmas dinner. Now, unless you've got like 12 people turning up at your house, you know, it's, it's a massive expense. And really when you think about it, a turkey is just a big fat dry old chicken, isn't it? Chicken is better, so that's what we're gonna do. If you've got a few more people coming round, you know, you've got like seven, eight people, grab another chicken, stick that in the oven. But this is gonna be enough for four or five people, no problem. But what we're gonna do is I'm gonna put this to one side because we're gonna make a compound butter to shove up its skin. Right, quick little compound butter then. Um, this is gonna go underneath the skin. It's gonna add flavor to the chicken and make it lovely because this is just a crappy bullshit shop-bought chicken. Nothing special about it. And I'm gonna add some butter to this bowl. Listen, as per usual, all the measurements will be in the description below, all the ingredients as well. To that, I'm gonna add two cloves of garlic, just mince that in. Then to that, I'm gonna add some sage, Powerful stuff, sage, so I'm gonna go with about a teaspoon. If you haven't got any sage, you could use some tarragon, uh, you could use some rosemary if you want. Use whatever kind of dried herbs you've got kicking around in your cupboard. And then I'm gonna add a bit of sweetness to this, so I'm gonna add some cranberry sauce, which you usually would have with your turkey. But we're not having turkey, we're having chicken, so we're gonna add some to the butter. It's gonna give it a nice bit of sweetness. Three sort of teaspoons of that. And then literally just get your hands in there and sort of mix it up really into a nice smooth paste. It does work better if your butter is at room temperature, but if you get your hands in there, it's gonna warm it up anyway, so don't fuss too much. Right, so whilst you've been away, I've kind of done a bit of prep, as you can see. Um, gonna be honest with you as well, I, I'm a little bit pissed, <laughs> if I'm honest with you. What, what happened was, was I went to work this morning, didn't really have much to eat. I had a bacon and sausage cob on the way to work. Then I worked all morning, Left work this afternoon, I thought, well, it's fine, it doesn't matter. I'm gonna go home, I'm gonna have something to eat because I'm gonna eat all this. And after that beer that you saw at the beginning, I thought, well, do you know what, I'm gonna get a bit merry. Get a bit merry, get the festive spirit. I decided to pour myself a neat rum. <laughs> and uh, yeah, I'm, I'm feeling a bit sort of glowing. So, uh, so much so, I started to see my own face in the stuffing mix. Which incidentally, I've done. Look, make it to packet instructions, roll it into balls. If you don't know how to do that, well, I don't know what to tell you. But I used Old Faithful, bit of pack, so other brands are available. This was like one pound 70, 80 something. Um, you can get Lidl's own brand for like 43p, but well, they didn't have any. Got the carrots, we've got the parsnips. They, they've kind of been cut to sort of the same, well, roughly the same sort of size. So they're in cold water, because that's gonna stop them going brown. Now over here, Oh, sorry mugs. I've got a little trivet of veg. I've got some carrots, there's about three carrots in there. One large onion. Um, I've got a bit of ropey old celery in there. If you haven't got any celery, don't worry about it. You don't need to go out and buy some. I just had it lying around. So I thought I'd use it. There's some rosemary in there as well. Got our spuds. Now for the roast potato, you are only gonna wanna use one kind of potato, if you can and that's this sucker, the King Edward. It is the best potato for a roast potato bar none. You can get away with a Maris Piper, but these suckers are honestly, they make the best roast potatoes. Now, as a rule of thumb, you want about two potatoes this size per person. That's gonna make two roast potatoes, so two of them is gonna make four, 
but plus one extra because there's always going to be someone that wants some more you're going to want leftovers and also you can never make enough roast spuds so roughly that sort of size two per person plus one extra that's the measurement i use but what i'm going to do now is get this chicken out of the bag and get that compound butter underneath its skin okay right so there is our chuck i've also got my oven preheated to gas mark six conversions will be up on the screen so what i'm going to do is take a wooden spoon the end of a wooden spoon and then just kind of poke it underneath the skin you can see that there just kind of work it down all the way to the back try not to obviously pierce the skin this just sort of separates the skin from the flesh just a nice easy way of doing it you can use your fingers but i just find this way is easier and then just taking our compound butter just take a lump of it and just sort of wedge it in there really that's all you need to do come on in you go really all you want to do is just kind of smush it underneath the skin work it all the way to the back so the whole breast is covered any leftover butter you got just kind of smash it on there stick it between the legs then to the top of that i'm just going to add a smattering of oil and then salt and pepper um, plenty of it because we want that nice sort of golden crispy skin with that nice sort of saltiness pepper and then to the roasting pan i'm going to add some water this just sort of stops the veggie is sort of catching too much on the bottom because we're going to use that as the base for our cheats gravy. That's right, cheats gravy. And then into the oven with that sucker. And that bird is going to take about an hour and 20 minutes to cook, probably about an hour and a half. Obviously till the juice is run clear, the skin is nice and crispy. Um, you might need to kind of top it up with a bit of water just to stop it burning on the bottom because we don't want burnt bits on that bottom because we need to keep that for the for the base for our gravy our cheat gravy but it also depends on the size of your chicken as well if it's larger it's going to take longer if it's smaller it's going to take less time cut into the thickest part of the chicken if the juice is run clear it's cooked easy at the same time i'm also going to get my spuds on onto the hob generous pinch of salt i'm also going to add the carrots and the parsnips as well because i need to blanch these ready for roasting later. Right, so I've brought the pot to the boil and I've turned it down to a simmer. So what I'm gonna do is just simmer the carrots and the parsnips for about three minutes. I'm not gonna cook them all the way through, we're blanching them. Kevin! Then what I'm gonna do is after about three minutes, I'm gonna take the parsnips and the carrots out, leave the potatoes in. Then I'm gonna fill this bowl up with cold water. Okay, this just shocks them. It stops the cooking process and this will keep them nice and fresh ready for when we roast them. There we go, I can't even speak. I'm properly like two sheets to the wind. Uh. <laughs> and your spuds, you wanna carry on cooking them for about another five minutes or so, right, until they're almost cooked through, okay? You wanna take them as far as you dare, because uh, what you want is to create like a, a nice fluffy surface area, okay? Because that's gonna give you the nice crispy roast potato at the end. Focus, you stupid thing. See these sort of craggy edges here? That's what you're looking for. I think they are about done. That's as far as I'm gonna take them. So I'm gonna drain them off. Now at this point, most people will tell you to ruffle them up, you know, put them in hot fat and away you go. Don't do that. What we're gonna do is we need to let these steam dry. So I'm gonna put them onto a, a roasting tray on one single layer and then just leave them alone. Leave them to steam dry until like pretty much all the steam is gone. Top tip for you, what you can do is once they've dried out like that, you can ruffle them up, stick them on a, on a tray, put them in the freezer till they're frozen solid. And then what you can do is the next day on Christmas day, you can roast them off from frozen. So you can do this the night before. Pig. More pig. Right, pigs in blankets then. It, look, it's, it's not rocket science. It's basically pork chipolatas wrapped in smoked bacon. It's really not that difficult. So I've got some pork chipolatas here, smoked bacon, smoked streaky bacon. Don't use like back bacon. It's not the kind of the right thing for a, for a pig's in blanket. Then literally all you're gonna do is take your pork chipolata, take a piece of 
smoked streaky bacon, and then just roll the fucker up. It's really not that difficult. Okay, try and keep it nice and tight. And that is a pig in blanket. What did that take? Like 10 seconds, if that? I would say two of those per person for a dinner. You're golden, because remember there's lots of other stuff on the plate as well. But make sure you make extra, because people are always going to want extra, aren't they? So I'm going to crack on with these. I'll see you in a sec. Pigs in blankets done. Look at that. 12 nice little puppies there. I have got a bit of smoked bacon left, which I don't want to waste. What I'm going to do is get rid of all this crap. Okay, and I'm going to sort of dice it up and I'll add that to our Brussels sprouts later on. So I'm going to do a nice little quick Brussels sprouts recipe because I don't really like sprouts, right? People say, oh yeah, they're just like mini cabbages. No, they're not. They're shite, but people seem to like them, so I'm going to do a recipe for them. Okay, so I've just taken the, the chicken out of the oven. A little bit scorched there, I don't know why that is. Uh, I'm just going to take some of the fat, just baste it over the top, whack that back in. I think that's going to be ready in about another, ooh, I'd say 20 minutes or so, half hour. These are our roast buds. They are ready to rock and roll. You can see how dry they are. There's no steam coming off those. That is a good thing. That is the start of the perfect roast potato. And you see, again, the light's too bright. Let's turn it off. See all them little craggy bits? You can see it there. That's the start of a perfect roast spud. Don't let anyone tell you otherwise. If fucking Uncle Derek starts coming in, starts whittering in your ear roll, oh my, my roast spuds are better than yours. Right, just take another shot of rum and tell him to fuck off. I'm gonna leave the swearing in in this video. I don't even care, it's Christmas, I don't care. I haven't got time to edit it out. Sprouts. These stupid little fucking bum nuggets. I hate them. Oh, but they're like mini cabbages. Oh, no, they're not. Because I like cabbage and I don't really like sprouts. But I'm going to do them for you. I'm going to make some for you, but we're going to make them interesting. Because what would you usually do? You peel the outer leaves, you score the bottom, chuck them in a pan, boil them until they're fucked, eat them and then be disappointed. What I'm going to do, I'll just show you with one, is I'm going to take off the outer gammy shitty leaves because we don't want, we don't want those because it's going to taste of mud. Stick those in the bin or in the compost, whatever you want to do. Give them a bit of a rinse. Take off the horrible stalky bit, because that can be a bit tough and woody. And all I'm going to do is just take a sharp knife and just shred them. Okay, just like that. In terms of measurements, well, I would say you're going to want about that many per person, I'd say. Okay, so what I've done now is I've taken the chicken out of the oven I've transferred it onto a warm plate. It's a little bit scorched on the top, but don't worry, that is gonna be lovely, salty, umami flavor. Okay, it's gonna be absolutely fine. Uh, what I'm gonna do is I need to leave this to rest. So I'm gonna lightly sort of tent it with foil. Now you might be thinking at this point, yeah, but nothing else is ready, the potatoes aren't done, nothing's done. Don't worry, this needs to rest for at least 45 minutes to an hour. Okay, and you're gonna think oh, I was gonna go cold in that time. No, it's not. There's plenty of residual heat in there. It's going to continue cooking. All the juices are going to flow back through the chicken and keep it nice and moist. It's important. You must rest meat, whatever you're cooking. So I'm going to leave that lightly tented, pop that to one side. That will keep nice and warm whilst we get on with everything else. Now you see this pan that we roasted the chicken in. Look at all that fat, that butter, the veggies, the chicken fat, the juices. That is going to be the base for our cheats gravy. You do not want to waste this at all. God's sake, don't throw it in the bin. But I do need to reclaim this pan because I need it for, for roasting the spuds. So I'm going to empty all this stuff into a pan and we can get the roasties in. So with my pan then, I've still got some of the chickeny goodness in there. I'm going to go with some oil. I've got rapeseed oil here. You could use like duck fat, goose fat, lard, just normal vegetable oil, sunflower oil, whatever kind of oil you've got. And then back into the oven, this is still on about gas mark six. In it goes, and that needs to get nice and hot. Once that fat is nice and hot, straight in with your spuds. And as soon as it hits that oil, you wanna get them nice and coated all over. And I'd say at this point as well, make sure you pour yourself another drink, because booze makes this all taste better anyway. And after a few drinks, you won't give a fuck 
whether dinner's on time or late anyway. So it doesn't matter, does it? Crack them back in. And they're gonna take like 40, maybe 50 minutes to roast. Uh, you want them nice and crispy on the outside, nice and fluffy in the middle, like a perfect roast potato. Um, and that's like the longest bit now. Everything else is gonna take minutes. And once they're about halfway done, we're gonna add the carrots and the parsnips as well, because we're gonna roast those off and they're gonna be delicious. Hello. Okay, so we are about ready to put our carrots and parsnips in. Um, what I've got here is some of the fat. Can you see in there? Can you see in there? Just about. That's some of the fat that I drained off our sludge from our roasting our chicken. Because uh, we don't want the excess fat in the gravy because it's going to be too greasy. But I do want some of this fat. So we're going to put that over our carrots and parsnips. I'm going to drizzle that over. I'm going to hit that with a little bit of salt. A little bit of pepper as well. Then I'm going to give that a good old mix up. Get them all coated. Then what I'm going to do is put these underneath the roasties. That's purely because I've only got one shelf in my oven. So I've kind of got to do the best with what I've got. So I'm going to stick those underneath. Okay, I'm going to give my roasties a little bit of a turn. Okay, off we go, give them a bit of a turn. Then I'm going to slide these back on, just over the top, like that, and they'll continue cooking. And with the carrots and parsnips, they're going to take, oh, excuse me, about 20 minutes, oh, excuse me again. They're going to take about 20, 25 minutes to roast. Um, in about 10 minutes time, I'm going to flip them uh, just so they don't catch too much on the bottom and then we'll add some honey. But what I am going to do now is turn our focus to our gravy. So remember earlier I transferred all the khaki bits from roasting the chicken into this pot here. That is going to be the base for the most wonderful amazing gravy you're ever going to taste in your life. But we're making a cheat gravy. Now you can make it from scratch. I've got a make ahead gravy on the channel. I'll put a link to that uh, up on the screen somewhere and I'll also put it in the description below which you can make that a few days in advance, stick it in the freezer, it's ready to go on the day. But if you want a quick cheats little version, this is your boy. So to our pot then, I'm going to add a litre of cold water. And all I'm going to do is bring that to a gentle simmer. Get it on. Now what I am going to do as well, whilst that's coming to a simmer, I'm going to add our pigs in blankets to my air fryer. Thank God I've got this, is all I can say. It's an absolute lifesaver this thing. So I'm going to lay those in there, nice and snug. Because effectively I'm making a whole ass Christmas dinner for four people in this tiny little flat. I haven't got four people coming round because I've got no friends. Um, so I'm glad I've got this air fryer. Isn't, are they going to fit in? Yeah, just about. Um, so I'll close that. I'm not ready to switch it on at the minute, but they're ready to go when I need to. Right, okay, so as our water and sludge, chicken sludge, is coming to a simmer, we're gonna add some gravy granules, that's our cheat. Don't be like precious about these, they're absolutely fine um, in a pinch. You know, it's instant gravy, but rather than just add like boiling water, we're adding it to our stock mixture, which is gonna add lots of extra flavor. So just add enough in to get your gravy to your desired consistency. And again, I've got a make ahead gravy that uses chicken wings and lots of veg and bay leaf and all that kind of stuff, which is very, very nice. But if you haven't got the money, this is a great little cheats way to make a nice gravy. And that's your gravy ready. All I'm going to do is strain that when we're ready to go. I've got my peas there. They're the last thing that you need to turn on. Peas do not take long to cook at all. Literally, you want to bring them to the boil, boil them rapidly for two minutes, switch them off, they're done. I've got the pigs in blankets starting to cook away there. Listen, they're on about 180. They're going to take about 10, 15 minutes to cook. Um, and all I've got left to do now is the Yorkshire puds the stuffing balls and uh, our sprouts. What I am going to do quickly, because these carrots and parsnips are not far off, I'm going to add in some honey. Lidl's do their own honey. I think it's like there's like a squeezy tube. It's like 79p, something like that. They'd run out. So I had to go to like Sainsbury's and get this more expensive stuff. I'm just going to drizzle that over the carrots and parsnips. I'm going to whack these back in. Give them about another 10 minutes or so. Right, our sprouts then. 
So I've got a frying pan here, get that onto a uh, medium sort of heat. And I'm gonna chuck in that bit of bacon that we had left over from earlier. A bit of smoked bacon. If you haven't got any of that left, don't worry, you can just leave it out. And I'm gonna start getting that bacon sort of nice and crispy. Okay, bacon's just starting to crisp up. I'm gonna go in with, ooh, knob of butter. And then in with our shredded sprouts. Now these aren't gonna take very long at all because they're nicely shredded. Coat them in that butter, that bacon fat. You want a little bit of color, a little bit of tinge on the sprouts. That's gonna enhance the flavor and make them super delicious. It's not gonna take very long at all. About five minutes, they're gonna be done. Look at them beauties. Look at that, there's my roasties. You, if you want them a bit darker, you can take them a bit further, that's no problem. These are just perfect for me. The carrots and parsnips are finishing off in the oven. I've also put my stuffing balls in. They're gonna take about 10 to 15 minutes. But I just wanna show you something. I wanna prove a point. So remember our roast chicken from earlier that's been resting now for 45 minutes to an hour. And I don't know if you can pick it up on camera, but it's still steaming, it's still nice and warm. Okay, I'm just gonna slice a bit off for you. I'm just gonna show you the importance of resting meat. Why it's so important. So I get a piece like that, look. You can see the juice is glistening off that. Now, our sprouts are done. I could have added a few more sprouts in there, but if you want more, add some more sprouts. But I'm just gonna finish it off with a little squeeze of lemon. It's gonna cut through the fattiness of that bacon and just give it a little extra zip, as it were. Right, peas are gonna go on. They're not gonna take very long at all. Pigs in blankets, they are also done. Whoop, on a bite. Fit. Um, I'm gonna stick these underneath with the chicken, they'll keep nice and warm. Yorkshire puds. Again, don't be too precious about it. I'm using these sort of frozen ones. The reason I'm doing that is, yes, you can make your own batter. I've got a recipe on the channel that will show you how to do that but it means you're gonna to have to buy eggs, flour, and also milk. With these, you know, they're ready to go. They're gonna save you a bit of money and they're good. And you've also got options. I think these are like the posh ones. They were like beef tripping ones. Uh, the six in there, they're about, uh, I think they're like one pound 80 or one pound 70 something. But the ones next to it were 50 pence. So it depends on your budget. If you wanna make this cheaper, Go for the 50p ones, you know, it, it doesn't matter. It's your dinner at the end of the day. You don't have to justify yourself to any fucker. Um, so I'm gonna put these in the air fryer. They're gonna take like five minutes to, to cook. Follow your packet instructions. Right, we are, we are pretty much there, folks. Oh, that needs to turn down a touch, boiling over. Peas, they're like a, about 30 seconds away. Gravy's bubbling there, that needs to be drained. Pigs in blankets, chicken. Stuffing balls, they're fucking done. Everything else up there, that's gonna keep warm. Just like stick some tin foil over the top. Our parsnips and carrots are in the oven. They're like about 30 seconds away. So I'm just gonna kind of like turn everything off, get everything sorted and yeah, fucking Christmas dinner, done. <laughs> You know, I am pooped. I am knackered. Look at the state of this. <laughs> Look at that. Let's put that back on. Um, yeah, so there we go, right? Christmas dinner, under 20 quid, easily. Um, the irony is, I can't touch any of this as I've filmed it. Got the gravy there, got spuds, got the, the, uh, the sprouts, got the, the chicken there as well. I might just sort of pinch myself a pig in blanket, because I can. Oh, and the reason being is because it's about half nine at night. There's no light outside, it's fucking dark. So I've got to leave all this, can't touch it, I've got to cool it down, stick it in the fridge, and then tomorrow morning when I wake up, before I go to work, I've got to plate it all out, put it in its nice serving dishes, make it look all nice and fancy. So when you see all this B-roll, the nice footage, and it all looks nice and ready to go, and we're all plated up and nice, yeah, that's tomorrow when I filmed it all. So I've got to leave all this, as much as I want to smash my face into all of this, I can't, I've got to leave it to take all the B-roll and photos. This is the levels that I go to sometimes, you know, to make things look nice. 
Um, but as you can see from the B-roll, there is a bunch of food there. There is plenty enough there for four people, at least. And if you've got more than that coming over, stick an extra chicken on, a few extra spuds, more sprouts, a bit of extra veg, it, it's gonna stretch. And it means you're not gonna have to stress over this Christmas period, right? There's so much pressure on at Christmas as it is. You know, you've got to go out and buy all these gifts. The kids want that. You're worried about friends, family, what are you going to buy them? Okay, I don't want you to feel downtrodden by it. You can absolutely make a Christmas dinner for next to nothing. Well, 20 quid. But anyway, I'm going to go because my battery's running low. This is going to be my last video before Christmas now. So I'll see you afterwards. Hope you manage to relax, get some time with your family and friends and not stress too much. Um, but I'm going to go, I'm going to bugger off. Please like, share, subscribe, all that kind of stuff. Share this to your friends and family and also the people in need, especially this Christmas. I'll see you next time. Love you and a Merry Christmas. Oh, fucking hell, but I'm knackered.